Hi, I'm Peg Eaton. I'll be your guide today in the Tanzu for Platform Operators Workshop. I've been in the software industry for over 25 years. I'm an avid sailor and recently purchased a mobile crate so that my three dogs and I can have uh, some adventures all across America. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Tanzu portfolio and then quick review of the Tanzu observability and dive right into the lab. The VMware Tanzu portfolio is a family of products and services for modernizing your applications and infrastructure with a common goal, deliver better software to production continuously. VMware Tanzu Advanced has high value capabilities for platform operators. You can apply consistent operation and security for Kubernetes infrastructure and modern applications across multiple teams and clouds. Manage the life cycle of fleets of clusters and continuously validate cluster compliance. Deliver application continuity and security across clusters and clouds with Service Mesh. Meet service level objectives with automated failovers and scaling. Secure data with granular access policies and traffic encryption. Manage the Service Mesh lifecycle alongside your clusters. Implement networking connectivity and security for Kubernetes pods across clouds, even for the most demanding workloads. You can enhance container security with traffic encryption between pods and fine grain policy controls over pod traffic. With platform observability, you use advanced analytics to get visibility into the health and performance of workloads and clusters across clouds. You'll proactively observe and manage your Kubernetes estate. Kubernetes ingress services enable apps application availability, security, and responsiveness across on-premises and in any cloud. You can access consolidated L4 and L7 services, including global load balancing, intelligent web application firewall, and container ingress to simplify cluster operation. You can deploy an enterprise-ready Kubernetes runtime to power the delivery of modern apps across on-premise, public clouds, and edge. This includes logging, registry, networking, storage, OS, and cluster API-driven lifecycle management. And there are many of these products in the portfolio featured in the hands-on labs. I won't go through all of these, but provide it as a reference so that you can dive into the details when you have a chance. Tenzu Observability is a massively scalable, real-time analytics platform for metrics monitoring and is offered as a software as a service. Tenzu Observability allows you to ask almost any question of your data and get answers back in real time then easily turn such queries into dashboards and alerts. Your application environment is most likely emitting a large volume of metrics today. By collecting standard and custom metrics from all, of, all over your estate and streaming them to Tanzu Observability, you can achieve unprecedented, unified visibility into the performance of your entire stack. With a metrics approach, Tanzu Observability quickly lets you see the health across your entire system, all from a single pane of glass. Tenzu Observability also allows you to intelligently detect, diagnose, and resolve problems faster and cheaper than traditional monitoring tools. There are four major points of why Tenzu Observability is the ideal choice for your real-time monitoring requirements. Metrics as a service with super high performance. Industry-leading query-driven analytics engine. Intelligent analytics-driven alerting. And easy integrations to collect just about any metric. Let's take a look at some examples. Smart alerting allows you to use Tanzu observability analytics driven alerting to detect anomalies across your applications, Kubernetes, cloud, environments, and more. Custom dashboards. You can get instant monitoring and observability and correlate data across applications, infrastructure, developer and DevOps tools of your choice with package dashboards, metrics, and alerts. Applications observability allows you to triage microservices and future-proof application performance monitoring with standard-based distributed tracing and metrics. Okay, let's jump into the lab. For today's workshop, we're going to focus on Module 3, 
Tanzu Observability Basics and go into the details of access, dashboards, charting, and alerting. We'll be at the landing page, let's take a look at some of the components of the web interface. Certainly a new features list here, and we're going to come back to that later perhaps. And you'll notice uh, the cookies policies is kind of normal. You have a month. You can obviously continue to use this outside of the hands-on lab and the, and the workshop today. First thing we want to do is review the user profile settings. So there's a little gear icon up here. Pop into dark mode, you can do that. Observability is the ability to correlate information across a wide variety of sources. Tanzu Observability has more than 250 integrations allowing you to collect metrics and traces from almost any source to ask intelligent questions of that data in real time. As you can see, take a look at the integrations page here, and all the variety of sources that are available. Give you a chance to explore that on your own. Check out the dashboards selection here, where you can create a chart, create dashboards, and you can look at uh, all the existing dashboards. With Tanzu Observability Dashboards, you can visualize, correlate, and ask intelligent questions in real time of the data collected by these integrations. Dashboards are composed of charts, charts which are built with the Query Builder, or the Wavefront Query Language, or even PromQL. There's certainly some pre-existing dashboards that we'll browse through in a bit. Continuing across the UI, however, let's take a look at the alerting tab. The alerting is driven by the same wavefront query language that drives dashboards. You can visual, if you can visualize it on a dashboard, you can alert on it in alerting. The applications menu gives access to status, maps, table view, error percentage, distributed tracing, and opinionated dashboards for the services and operations. We'll cover this in detail later in the lab. And with the Browse tab, here you can browse all your raw metrics that are coming into the Tanzu Observability. You can also search your metrics by sources or check out various events. You can also view maintenance windows, derived metrics, proxies, alert targets. The settings tab, in addition to accessing a user profile, the menu provides access to the docs as well as configuration options and slow running queries. Let's navigate to the dashboards for our next step. Select the all dashboards as we did in the past. You're on the dashboard's landing page and ready for the next chapter. VMware Tanzu Observability Interactive Dashboards enable iterative investigation and faster anomaly detection. By using dashboards, you can quickly compare different sets of data, alter time windows for all data sets, and allow interactions. You can quickly create high-res and high-density charts and, and dashboards. 
You can treat, create charts from metrics, histograms, integrations, or chart, ty chart types using drag and drop. You can instantly visualize the health of your applications and infrastructure, drill down into cloud assets across regions, zones, and instances within a cloud environment. When you want to find a specific dashboard, you can search for it. You can also add tags and favorites as well, as we'll see below. We're going to use one of the built-in tour dashboards for the lab. As you can see in this demo environment, we have uh, many uh, pre-created dashboards, a set of metrics uh, that are running currently to be able to demonstrate the real-time uh, access uh, to the environment. So in the search field, we want to enter, if you're following along in the lab, we want to uh, enter the word tour. Get my mouse to work here, tour. And then select the cluster metrics exploration. And this narrows down the list on the display the sample cluster metrics. From here, you can click on the dashboard name to view it, but before we do, let's look at these options. The checkbox is used to select the dashboard to perform group operations. The three dot icons display the context menu of the dashboard. You can perform edit, clone, deletion, restore, etc. on your dashboard. Just highlight that a bit so you can see it. The star icon star icon is used to make this one of your favorites. Go ahead and click that just for fun. The preview thumbnail uh, previews how your dashboard looks. So you get this little teeny picture of the dashboard. Um, the plus button at the bottom. It's used to add tags to uh, the dashboard. And the small Tanzu observability logo Next to the dashboard indicates the dashboard type is system. It means the dashboard cannot be edited by the user. However, you can clone the dashboard and then edit it. Let's add a tag to the dashboard here. Okay. And we'll create a new tag rather than searching for an existing one. And let's label our tag as HOL. Click add. Let's click on the actual dashboard itself and go over some of the components. These are, um, you know, basic components of a dashboard. Obviously, these things can be customized, but uh, just to give you an idea. So this is the dashboard time window. You can select uh, different uh, time frames from the past to preset there. Um, and then comparing the current data from the past data and see thing, how things have changed. And you can see that the compare piece, uh, again, we can turn that on or off here. I think one of the handiest, there's just so, there's so much information here, but one of the handiest pieces of this, as you just saw, it can collapse it um, and, and then perhaps navigate to specific areas that, I, um, that I'm particularly interested in. And, and that means that you can tailor a particular dashboard for an audience. Uh, if you think about this from a platform operator's perspective, there may be a particular uh, areas that you're you're trying to target for different audiences, and it uh, definitely like, lets you do that. Um, especially if you're trying to have a mean time to a resolution, you know, being reduced, and you're trying to share, you know, what's going on with a particular app or a particular server. Uh, you can do that. You can share those components. So let's um, let's. Um, Jump to the memory section here. Let's 
Let's adjust our time window. Other than the last two hours, look at the last 10 minutes. And, and notice that all the charts um, zoom in. Uh, you're seeing some activity there. Um, and you get more detail of, of what's happening. You can also zoom in on a specific chart using the mouse and click and drag to focus on the chart. So again, we can just uh, pick a particular area and uh, start to focus on that uh, specifically of what's happening. After focusing the chart, notice there are now two additional buttons, a sync and time synchronized for the dashboard is there. So you can actually get that resynchronized. And notice you can you get a legend um, when you hover over the chart. And you can actually pin this um, with a shift P. So I'll do that. Shift P and notice that now my legends associated with this chart is up here uh, for me to be able to browse through and you know pinpoint what's going on with the again sort of particular item within the environment within that chart. There's, again, there's a lot of information in the legend, including metric name, source, and point tags. Um, if we select a specific source, we'll be highlighting a metric and make it stand out among, among all the other metrics. This is especially useful when you want to view only a specific metric for better visibility. And also notice that the name of the source that you select the metric is displayed at the bottom. do that. Pop this out for a second. So just by using the legend, having it pinned out like that, I can choose again that particular item to view. And get my mouse to work. There we go. Just like we did when we had the, I kind of like having the legend there and clicking on the legend, but again, you might not know exactly where you are, but you see some data spiking or, you know, some unusual behavior that you want to focus on. So you can do that as well. And um, also down here in the lower window, we have uh, sources, you know, specifically being uh, selected. And then you can individually um, you know, remove them as well. Sharing in dashboard can be really helpful, especially to help speed the mean time to resolution when a team's working on a problem. So this link in the lower corner here um, if, will give you the URL that you can share the specific item uh, that you've come across that you'd like to, to share with others. You have this link here, copy to the clipboard. Bring up a new URL, paste it. So you can share with others. And here, let's move on to checking out memory. over the CPU. Now you see the overlay chart with the dotted lines that are here. I'm trying to show you with my mouse, but I'm getting a other tab coming up. And you can see that in the other charts as well. So let me go back to turning the compare off. Notice what the chart looks like. 
this stage. And then uh, again, we'll go and do a day ago compare and you can see uh, at this time of day, um, again, what the uh, comparison would be with the CPU. And you can see that with the other um, uh, areas as well. Okay, cool. Pretty handy for troubleshooting. Okay, so now let's go up and uh, create our own chart here. Go to dashboards, create chart. If you're following along in your lab guide, choose metrics, and then you choose simple. And then we choose CPU, usage, user, percentage. Okay. Bingo, we have a chart. <clears throat> you can add this to an existing dashboard or create a new dashboard. Uh, charts can be created using Query Builder or by entering these queries directly. So a lot going on in dashboards for sure. A lot of data to be covered. Um, pretty handy stuff. Remember, uh, with a Control P, you can pin that legend that's that's there. Shift P, sorry. You can pin that, um, and you can also look at the different sources by clicking on the legend or particular, you can highlight it on the graph itself and look at a specific uh, data, data as well. Cool. So far you've looked at uh, being able to search dashboards, zoom in and see more granularity, compare with previous time periods, and be able to share dashboards and create a chart. Pretty cool. Remember, you can change your time frame and get the data, uh, zoom in a little bit more granularly. You can do a comparison of what was going on, again, a day ago in this case. Okay, so we've had an overview of Tanzu observability. Now let's take a look at using TO with uh, microservices and distributed tracing where the TO correlates the microservices metrics, traces, histograms, and span logs into the single platform. This makes it easy for SREs and developers to monitor modern applications with the built-in support for key health metrics, histograms, and distributed tracing and span logs for common languages and frameworks. Um, Beat Shirts is an application we'll be looking at, which is a Java Spring Boot application. So we go to Applications, Application Status, status and you'll see Beat Shirts and the various components that are uh, part of that application. We can use the uh, magnifying glass to zoom in uh, on the different components or uh, even uh, uh, dive, you know, dive more deeper in, into each of those elements as you hover over it. You'll see some activity of the flows that, that are, happen to be there. And if we click on, say, the styling service, we'll start to see in this flyout menu service name, the technologies that the service uses, and uh, red metrics, things like uh, request weight, rate, error rate, duration, latency. The menu options to divide, dive deeper into an opinionated service and operations dashboard, traces, and alerts. Um, I'll just show you the drop-down menu here. 
where you can we can explore those uh, momentarily. But before we do that, let's look at a different way of viewing the ap application. Up here, you get the map view and a table view. And we see that the shopping service, so the shopping service has a pretty high error rate. Let's dive into deeper detail. If we look at the top failed requests, we see that the order shirts uh, request is failing the most and has the highest latency. Uh, let's investigate with the distributed tracing to see if we can see why. So just uh, click on that. So there's a lot to see here. On the left column, we see the traces for the time frame selected. The top and middle right show the services map, tree services map, uh, to where the error occurs. Let's uh, expand the trace itself, make it a little easier to read. You can expand the service delivery trace map up here as well. But let's go for the actual uh, log. As we deal, drill down, we see the delivery controller dispatch and uh, look at the logs. So you get a lot of detail around that item, and the logs are loading. And interesting, so here's timeout except, exception, and we get the actual line number and the code that we could actually go to where the timeout's happening. So, terrific. Uh, mechanism to be able to quickly isolate errors and then go continue troubleshooting where that where the error occurred. I hope this has been useful. And that's it for the workshop today. Thanks for taking the time to cover VMware Tanzu observability. We've covered dashboards. We took a look at the particular cluster metrics dashboard, looked at the uh, way to compare various data points. We covered distributed tracing of the beat shirt application, and there are many more tutorials that you can walk through uh, on the site, and your demo account lets you continue that even outside of this uh, workshop time. Hope you have a great day, and thank you so much for the time today. Mm -hmm.